Let's start at the very bottom of the intelligence scale, where intelligence struggles not to shine, but simply to survive. Subnormal. This is the level of intelligence where daily life feels like solving a puzzle with missing pieces. Imagine waking up and being handed a manual for life, except half the pages are gone. People at the subnormal range, often measured with an IQ below 70, face real barriers to independence. Tasks most of us brush off without a thought, like following bus schedules, calculating change at the store, or even understanding abstract rules, can feel like climbing a mountain with weights tied to your ankles. But here's the key detail. Subnormal doesn't mean worthless. It often comes with surprising forms of resilience, social warmth, or practical talents. Many people at this level thrive in structured environments, relying on consistency rather than complex reasoning. It's a reminder that intelligence isn't just about how high your mental gears can turn, but how well you use the ones you've got. Below average. Now we climb a little higher, into the territory where life is more manageable but still not effortless. Below average intelligence usually means an IQ range between 70 and 90. And here you find people who often blend into society without drawing too much attention. They can handle jobs, relationships, and responsibilities, but might struggle when the abstract ramps up, like navigating tax forms, interpreting layered sarcasm, or keeping up in fast-paced academic settings. Imagine a video game where everyone else is playing on normal difficulty, but your controller sometimes lags. You're in the game, but the effort is heavier. Still, many people in this range compensate with work ethic, persistence, and real-world savvy. Intelligence tests don't measure grit, intuition, or how good you are at reading people, all of which can let someone with below-average smarts still find success where book-smart people stumble. Average. This is the land where most of humanity lives, the IQ range of 90 to 110. At this level, intelligence feels invisible because it's so normal we stop noticing it. It's the worker who keeps society functioning, the student who doesn't top the class but also doesn't fail, the friend who understands enough jokes to laugh along. Being average might sound unremarkable, but it's actually what makes the world stable. With average intelligence, you can navigate modern society's complexity like taxes, technology, relationships, jobs, without too much strain. But here's the twist. Average doesn't mean average in every domain. A so-called average person might have bursts of brilliance in art, music, or problem-solving that IQ tests can't capture. The truth is, being average is like being a solid brick in the wall of civilization, unnoticed individually but absolutely essential when put together. Above average. Now we move into the territory of sharpness. An IQ between 110 and 120 usually means ideas come quicker, connections snap together more easily, and abstract thinking feels less like a chore and more like a playground. People at this level are often the ones who thrive in competitive schools, who breeze through puzzles, and who always seem a step ahead in conversations. Imagine being able to process life with just a bit more bandwidth than everyone else, like having an internet connection that loads pages instantly while others buffer. Above average intelligence often leads to leadership positions, because these individuals can see the bigger picture. But it also comes with a trap, overconfidence. Being slightly above the crowd can create the illusion of being far above, and that can lead to arrogance, blind spots, and missed lessons from those below. The gift here isn't just sharper thinking, but learning how to balance it with humility. Gifted. Crossing into gifted, usually an IQ of 130 or more. Here, minds start operating on levels that feel almost alien to the average person. These are the children who, while others are learning multiplication tables, are already playing with algebra or philosophy. Adults at this level often innovate, create, and push boundaries. They might be scientists, inventors, or artists who bend reality into new shapes. But being gifted is a double-edged sword. The world wasn't built for people who think too far ahead. Gifted individuals often face social isolation, boredom in conventional environments, and a sense of being out of sync with those around them. It's like being a race car forced to drive on a city street. The potential is thrilling, but without the right track, the right challenges and mentors, the engine sputters. Giftedness is not just about ability. It's about whether the world gives you space to use it. Genius. This is where names become legends. Einstein, Da Vinci, Marie Curie. Genius is often defined as IQ of 140 or higher, but it's more than just a number. Genius isn't raw horsepower. 
its horsepower directed in a way that reshapes the world. A genius doesn't just understand problems. They see problems others don't even recognize exist. They're not just faster at thinking, they're thinking differently. Take Einstein's theory of relativity. He wasn't simply solving equations. He was reimagining the fabric of the universe. Genius often comes with obsessive focus, relentless curiosity, and a resistance to conventional thinking. But genius can also be lonely. When your thoughts consistently operate at a frequency others can't tune into, it can feel like living in exile while surrounded by people. The genius mind is both a gift and a burden, capable of brilliance that changes humanity, but often at the cost of personal peace. Posthuman. And then we step beyond the human altogether. Posthuman intelligence isn't something we see in the present. It's the hypothetical future where human minds are augmented by technology, genetics, or both. Imagine a brain that never forgets, that can process information faster than today's supercomputers, and that can instantly link into a collective hive mind. It sounds like science fiction, but we're already inching toward it, with brain-computer interfaces, AI-enhanced cognition, and genetic editing on the horizon. The post-human level raises thrilling possibilities, solving diseases, mastering space travel, creating art or science at speeds unimaginable today but it also raises terrifying risks. Inequality between enhanced and unenhanced humans, the loss of individuality, or intelligence so powerful it forgets empathy. Posthuman intelligence isn't just another step up the ladder. It's an entirely new ladder, one where the rungs disappear into clouds we can't yet see. Transcendent. Finally, we reach the level that isn't just beyond human. It's beyond comprehension. Transcendent intelligence represents a state where thought isn't bound by biology or even by the rules of the physical world as we know them. Imagine consciousness that operates across dimensions, perceives time non-linearly, and understands truths that human language can't even begin to express. Some compare this level to touching the infinite, others call it impossible, but it lingers as the ultimate speculation. What happens when intelligence evolves beyond the boundaries of matter itself? At the transcendent stage, the question stops being what can we know, and becomes what does it even mean to know? It's a horizon we can imagine but never fully reach. A reminder that intelligence is not just a scale, but a journey. One that takes us from survival to speculation, from bricks to skyscrapers, and maybe, someday, from humans to something we can't yet put into words. Do you think humans can climb higher on the ladder of intelligence, or are we stuck where we are? Let me know in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, hit like, subscribe, and share it with someone who'd love to know this too.